Arc Invest isn't buying anything from these sectors. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got a haircut, I got a beard trim, I look about 800 years younger, I promise it's still the same person. It's gonna grow back, it's gonna grow back. But today we're gonna speak about Arc Invest's bad idea report because I came across a video for this and found it absolutely hilarious. Essentially, Arc Invest are poking fun at more traditional investors, or people who are afraid of, you know, keeping up with the times, people who are afraid of investing in innovative technology, innovative companies, and I must say they did so beautifully. So there is an actual report that's pretty much 20 pages long. We're gonna go through it and we're gonna see what exactly ARK Invest are not buying into. Because I think we all have a good idea of what ARK is buying right now. Pretty much anything that screams innovation. And maybe I will go through that in a future video. But today we're gonna speak about what ARK Invest is not buying in 2020. So my friends, right before we get into the video, could I please ask you to hit that juicy like button. It helps out the YouTube algorithm, it really helps out your boy. If you're interested, please hit that juicy do see red subscribe button and join the family of investors. We're trying to get to 50,000 as soon as we possibly can. And drop me a comment, let me know what you think about the video, and let me know what you think about what Eric Invest is saying. With that being said, let's get into it. So guys, for context, here is a clip that Eric Invest uploaded to their YouTube channel. Five industries investors should avoid bad ideas. And it's hilarious. It's only a minute long. I'm going to play it for you right now. Are you an investor looking for long-term capital appreciation, but worried about the short-term volatility associated with innovative companies? Well, you're not alone. Many investors appear to be afraid of companies that offer newer, faster, cheaper, and creative products and services. Now you can avoid these innovative companies. How? Ask your advisor today if investing in a traditional broad-based index is right for you. A broad-based index provides investors with a feeling of safety and comfort, knowing that they hold past success. Often based on tangible assets like a bank branch, railroad, or real estate, indices should generate predictable cash flows because, hey, that's historically been the case. And things never change. Side effects may include, but are not limited to, owning companies associated with the traditional world order. Investors holding stocks associated with traditional transportation, banking, bricks and mortar retail, and linear TV may experience headache, nausea, and increased blood pressure due to the accelerating threat of disruptive innovation. Your investment portfolio doesn't need to be bothered by a changing world. This parody was brought to you by ARK Invest. I mean, that's hilarious, guys, okay? They're essentially poking fun at traditional index funds, traditional investors. It's hilarious, because we all know what ARK Invest are, okay? They, they invest in these innovative companies. A lot of you guys might have seen this, their big idea is 2020 overview. It's the kind of industries that they are interested in. So deep learning, streaming media, electric vehicles, automation, 3D printing, autonomous ride-hailing aerial drones, next generation DNA sequencing. Essentially, they're investing in what is the future. You know, these crazy innovative companies. And so they did actually release an entire bad ideas report and we're gonna go through it right now. But essentially, what they're saying is, based on our research, we believe investors should evaluate and avoid the following bad ideas. Physical bank branches, brick and mortar retail, linear TV, freight rail, and traditional transportation. We probably all could have assumed that these would have all made the list, but still, it's going to be interesting nonetheless. So here's the report that's available on the website for anybody to download, the Bad Ideas Report. And this is hilarious. The industries that could be disrupted by innovation. So these are kind of the industries that, you know, we're investing in the next generation of what these guys once were. So physical bank branches. Now this is an odd one because when I started investing, I was going to be a dividend investor. And I like the look of banks because of how beaten up they were, how they performed coming out of the Great Recession last time. But as I evolved, I sold out of my bank stocks 100%. Zero interest in owning them right now. Traditionally, you know, banks and financial related stocks have done very well. But times are changing. And that's what they say here. The internet and smartphones are transforming the distribution of financial services. Thanks to cellular services, we believe smartphones are distributing financial services more efficiently and cost effectively. Digital wallets, bank branches and user pockets are rendering expensive physical infrastructure useless, putting at risk hundreds of billions of dollars of traditional financial institutions assets. And I agree guys, I don't need to go to the bank, I mean I have it all on my phone, I have it all online. There's not as much use for these massive buildings right now. And there are more and more alternatives for how to spend your money or how to get paid. Think PayPal, think Revolut, etc, etc. Some of my money never touches the bank now, I just get paid directly to PayPal and I pay other people through PayPal. So consumer banking is shifting from brick and mortar to digital and mobile. See here, customer growth comparison, so Wells Fargo. 
sideways. This is from the second quarter 16 to the second quarter 2020. Chime, Cash App, Cash Card, Venmo, all going up. So I mean, yeah, I agree. This is obviously the kind of thing you wouldn't expect Act to invest in. Now next up is brick and mortar retail, which is interesting, but again, I do understand it. It's very traditional. I do still think that there can be some good opportunities here, but yeah, a lot of them are gonna become redundant relatively soon, in my personal opinion. While in-store retail sales in the US peaked in 2015, the Rony pandemic has accelerated the shift to e-commerce. And I mean, we have seen this so much. Look at Shopify, for example. Last mile autonomous delivery could provide another boost. I think we're all aware of that as well. Imagine workhorse vehicles that are fully autonomous. That's something I spoke about with Green Power Motors on an interview as well. So in our view, companies with large retail real estate footprints will continue to suffer from a decline in foot traffic. And I mean, it makes sense. Those buildings are gonna have massive up costs and why bother when you could just have a warehouse? I mean, there's loads of retailers out there now where you can't buy their clothes or their products from a physical location. I mean, I sell merch, I sell clothes. I don't have a physical location. It's becoming less and less necessary. There's gonna be a massive switch and I believe that a lot of these companies won't be able to keep up with the innovation and a lot of them will ultimately fail. The US has up to 10 times the retail square footage per capita than other countries. Massive. That's a lot guys. I mean, that does not seem sustainable in a world where we're moving online. E-commerce is accelerating. I think we all know this. At this rate, by 2030, 2035, more of our shopping will be done online than in-store. Now, linear TV. I don't even think I need to spend much time on this one. I think it's very obvious why Ark and most of us would not be interested. So linear TV is real-time programming access over the air or by cable slash satellite at scheduled times. I mean, Guys, who really does this anymore? You can get any program or any film online at the snap of a fingers for $10 a month. Why would you confine yourself to watching anything live? Of course, some people still will, especially the older generations, but I mean, as the years, and particularly as the decades go on, I think that linear TV is gonna become more and more redundant. As of the end of 2019, roughly 86 million US households still paid for linear TV. In our view, not for long. And yeah, I wouldn't think it'd be for too long either. And as well, when you look at their revenue, it comes from two places, subscription and advertising. I think for one, people get more money for their advertising online nowadays. I mean, you use Facebook, you use Google, you use YouTube, whatever it is. I think you're going to get more bang for your buck there in general. It's not cheap to advertise on television either. And there's not as many people with their eyes on television as there is on YouTube, for example, or on Facebook. I just don't think it's going to be maintainable whatsoever. And then you can see here, the streaming services are driving cord cutting. The cost per hour of cable TV minus ads and the cost per hour of Netflix. Just look at it, look at what it has to say. Okay, next up, freight rail. So based on Eric's research, autonomous electric trucks will compete cost-effectively with freight rail and will offer better, more convenient service. Since the early 2000s, freight rail has been tanking share from trucking and increasing prices. In our view, the commercialization of autonomous electric trucks will reverse both share and pricing dynamics, putting freight rail providers at risk. Most certainly could agree, especially within five to 10 years, I think this could really start becoming a possibility. And I mean, that's what Eric does and that's what us innovative investors try to do. We're trying to invest five to 10 years before, you know, they are the dominant prominent force. That's exactly what Eric says here. During the next five to 10 years, Eric expects autonomous electric trucks to reduce the cost of trucking from 12 cents per ton mile to three cents, undercutting rail prices with the help of lower cost electricity and maintenance. And then the last one, I mean, if you watch this channel, I don't even need to explain this to you, but traditional transportation, okay? In specific, they started off with Robo Taxi saying that they could reduce the cost of point to point mobility discontinually in the US, stealing $150 billion in annual demand per year from ride hailing. I mean, this is why we're investing in these companies. Look at Tesla, for example. Our Robo Taxis, everybody's so excited for that. And when that comes to fruition, Tesla's gonna be worth a lot of money and they're gonna be taking a lot of money from other companies. If Robo Taxis become the dominant form of urban transit, which I think a lot of us expect them to, at least us innovative investors, Eric expects US auto sales to drop from 17 million units today to roughly 10 million by the end of the decade. That is a huge drop, people. As an investor, that is an absolutely insane drop, but we want to be on the right side of it. We want to invest in, you know, the non-traditional transportation. We want to invest in the Teslas and the other autonomy related companies. So a wave of disruption is rolling through the auto industry and beyond. I don't need to go through all of this, but look at this. A taxi, okay, price per mile, $3.50. An autonomous taxi could be 20 five cents people cheaper than a ferry cheaper than your own personal car that is crazy that is the potential these companies have and you can imagine that that is going to lead to these companies doing extraordinarily well for a very very long time and so when we read through their bad ideas report okay that's what we just went through and then we come over to their big ideas 2020 overview 
it becomes apparent why Arik Invest is investing in the companies that they do. And it becomes apparent why they are performing so incredibly well in comparison to traditional indexes. The Arik K on the one year chart up 145% for an ETF during the times we live in right now. That is absolutely absolutely insane 145 percent on the yearly chart for reference the s p is up 16.6 percent i mean there is no comparison arc has been destroying it and that is just the arc k the arc q up 95.7 percent as well i mean absolutely destroying the broader market destroying old school investors in general and then the arc w okay their next generation internet etf up over 140 percent i mean the results these guys have gotten really do speak for themselves. They are destroying the broader market to pieces. And this is what Arik actually does invest in. So deep learning from vision to language. Streaming media, so the exact opposite of your linear television. Electric vehicles, we know about this. Tesla is their biggest in pretty much all of their ETFs. Automation, so your robo taxis, but not even just that, but just increased productivity and more jobs. Robots, etc. 3D printing, we've spoke about this on the channel a couple of times at this stage. They call it an underestimated tech technology. Autonomous ride hailing, yet again we just spoke about that. Aerial drones. Next generation DNA sequencing, the transformation of oncology. We've seen them invest in that. In their RQ in particular, I think there's a couple of companies related to this. I've spoke about one or two of them in the past. It's not something I know enough about, but I mean, it makes sense. If you get any breakthroughs here, you're going to make a lot of money. Biotech R&D efficiency, okay, and digital wallets, so even things like Bitcoin. So when you look at what they don't want to invest in, it becomes very apparent as to why they do want to invest in these right here. And I mean, their performance speaks for itself. They have been destroying the broader market to absolute pieces while maintaining balanced ETFs in general. If they just hold their Tesla forever, they'd be up even more, but that's not how, you know, being an actual ETF manager works. So a lot of people kind of are asking the question, you know, why are so many people getting behind Arc Invest? And I think this is why, I think it's because of the things that they are investing in. I think it's a lot of people like me and most of you guys watching these videos, the people who want to get in on the next big thing. A lot of younger investors, a lot of people who love innovation. That is who loves Arc right now and that's why we have a lot of respect for them. They also release an awful lot of helpful information on a regular basis. So they have the proven track record, okay? They put their money where their mouth is. I mean, they invest in absolutely everything to do with disruptive technology. Whether it's a $1 stock or a $400 plus dollar stock, whether it's a $100 billion, $400 billion market cap, or a $10 million market cap, it doesn't matter to them. They put their money where their mouth is regardless, and I think they appeal to a certain kind of investor, which is, you know, more than likely me and you, your younger, more innovative investor, who's willing to, you know, keep an open mind. But that's how you invest, and I did just think that this was a really good report to read through, because it shows you what they don't invest in. So, my friends, a little bit of a different video, but I just thought this was really interesting, so hopefully some of you did as well. If you did, and you took some value from it, and you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like like button, drop me a comment and subscribe if you're new around here again. We're trying so hard to get to 50,000 subs. All of that would be so appreciated. But I mean, I love Eric. You know, as far as fund managers goes, I have an awful lot of respect for them. And, you know, Kathy Wood in particular, of course. I think a lot of us think she's an absolute genius because of just how well she's performed. Like anybody, you know, she makes some good decisions and some bad decisions. But overall, she has destroyed the broader market. But if you have watched this video all the way till the end, you, my friend, are a true legend. And I really do appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. You're helping me out so so much just by watching the video so thank you sincerely but anyway my friends i hope you enjoyed i hope you all have an absolutely fantastic sunday i will see you for another video very soon peace